welcome. This is what we'll be working with today. A tick box selection that when you click adds your contents into a list or as says here your shopping cart. So we've got a milk and bread add into the list. When we deselect they are taken out and you add them in they are put into the list. Now the question is if you want to add something that's not in the list how do you do it? This is the answer. You have an optional box that you click which supplies you with the input text field. In the input text field you can then add in what you want to put in. So if we say butter, you can then put your butter into the text field. If you untick these you can still have your butter with whichever selections you have. If you change it, it changes dynamically. If you untick it removes it completely from the list as well as if you retick it you notice it has been wiped clean so you can enter a fresh selection. This is a modification of an existing tutorial based at develop PHP. I suggest you go and have a look at it before you do this one which will give you more of the basics behind it. You can find it here in the Adobe Flash section and go to checkbox and there it is da -da 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 -da. now that was made by Adam and it's well worth a look before you continue with this one but as we are on this now as time restraints are I shall go straight to the code and show you what I've done before we do the code I'll show you what I've got on stage what I've done is I've added here a checkbox inside of a movie clip. So if you notice here's the movie clip instance name. If we double click into the movie clip you can see there's my text field and that's been given an instance name as well. Come out of that we go into the action. This part is pretty much the same as the original only difference being is we've added in a variable for checkbox 3 which is the new checkbox on the stage we've got an event listener for the checkbox we've also made an event listener for the input field which is a change event we've got a checkbox label and then as we go down we've given it's a location on stage because it's been pulled into the stage dynamically and we've added it to stage here. Now because the, tech, the checkbox is opening up an input field you don't want the input field to be visible until you've clicked it so you say here input MC which is the movie clip visible equals to false which means you will not see it until you're wanting it to be shown. Now this section here is the basic event as was be done before by Adam. The first two if statements are for the first two checkboxes which as they come they put their label as the name onto the list but the function itself has been modified from a mouse event to a regular event. Reason being is we are changing inside of it. We're converting the cart txt which everything has been put into, converting it to a text string. Now next set of if statements we've got here checkbox select 3 if selected equals true over here we say that the input field is visible so input underscore mc dot visible equals true which means we bring it back onto stage so we can see it and over here is the, the optional for the checkbox 3 if selected is not true we make it back in, invisible and we remove by putting here input mc dot input underscore txt dot text is equal to nothing that will delete any information in the list 
Now for it to update dynamically, we have to input another if statement into the first if statement for the checkbox 3, which is here. That is for the input underscore mc dot input underscore txt dot text dot length, which means if there's anything in the text field, it will then start to update. We tell it where and what we're doing with it, which is the same as above. Cart underscore txt dot append text. In brackets, we say which text we want to append, which is the same here, which is the input underscore mc dot input underscore txt dot text. Now what this does is, because it's inside the first if statement, it will only run if this is true. If this is not true, this effectively does not exist, which means the list removes this item. If you do not put it here, it does not remove the list dynamically right away from the list. So a simple bit of code, but if not executed in this particular way, you get strange results. You're willing to try and test it out yourself. This will be hopefully up at Develop PHP for you to download this modified version so you can have a look at it and play with it yourself. As a bonus, I've also got this one that I'll be including into it, which is what you could do with the modification. I won't go into the code of this one, but I'll just, well, if I've got time I will do. Basically, you've got dynamic text fields that you can just add into as you want to write your own list out. So you can do your own shopping list with all custom items. If any of them are wrong, you can remove them from the list and change them if you wish. This is the code for that one. And you see it's a very simple bit of code. At the top we've got our event listeners for each input text field. They all are change events referring to this function here which is selected one event <coughs> which is a regular event turn result text field into a string results are nothing if we do not put this you end up with the name of the string as well as all the information that you have typed in if I deselect and comment it out and we run it I shall show you if I just go one two three you see here in brackets it's giving you the name of location of the, the string so that's why we in the code have this which sets the string value to nothing that way you don't have strange results coming up the rest of it are just basic if statements for the text field simply enough to understand so I hope this helps and as Adam says happy coding and have fun